Well, hello everybody. This is a new setup today. I've got this um, microphone and I've got this screen and it's capturing the stuff on the screen. I'm going to have to polish the audio off, but it's hissing. But otherwise it works fine. You know, I like this new setup. I'm going to talk about this stuff here. Do you see this on the seventh door? Or what is that? It's basically an atom. Now, you know, people like Zachariah Sitchin, uh, they spent so long interpreting or even reinterpreting Sumerian texts, some say dubious interpretations, uh, to investigate ancient astronauts. But why not look at the Indian stuff? It, you don't need to interpret it or, or, or change it in any way. People have accused him of changing the information around. The Indian stuff is fairly explicit. You know, it, 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 there's no room for error or interpretation about what they're describing. They even describe... Uh, the age of Brahma. Brahma means world or universe. It's uh, sort of the Indian version of Uranus. And they say the world is 4.5 billion years old. That, that is the age of the universe. So how do they know this? How do they know this? Well, there's a number of ways they could do it. Um, one of them is simply they could have had a theory that the world is made of uranium, knowing that uranium comes from the deepest depths of the earth and they could have measured the half-life of uranium as four and a half million years uranium four and a half billion years and uranium is also the heavy na heaviest natural element so if you look at this um we see atomic orbitals here so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen sorry twelve one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 12. Uh, so what we do, we go to the periodic table and <clears throat> how this works is going downwards are the numbers of orbitals. So hydrogen has one orbital, potassium has four orbits. Think of them like a solar system. And we, we measure across 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have this series. So these ones have 12 in their outer orbit of electrons. And the outer shell is the most important one. It's the reactive shell, and um, electrons donate uh, atoms donate electrons to other atoms uh, into a bond, and, and the bond is what joins things together. So we have zinc, cadmium, mercury, or copernicium. So you know it was one of those. So if that's what it represents, I don't know if these represent atomic orbitals or not. The nucleus looks weird, almost like an electron cloud. I mean, it's a chevron, I suppose, a decorative feature. It almost gives me the feeling that this door was made by people who didn't fully understand it was it was made by later generations who didn't fully understand what was going on inside or what had gone on inside if something was scientific but they wanted to represent it as best they could but they did it in terms of mythology their own mythology i suppose it, it's sort of like at uh, at cern in Switzerland, there's a, there's a big statue of Shiva out the front, and these guys were doing something similar, I suppose. Uh, but you can tell it's sort of later generations who didn't quite get it, because these aren't really atomic in a way. They're, they're atoms, but they're not atoms. You see what I mean? They're kind of like, they're showing that this is where the science happened. Now, the ancient Indians, they, look, this is not a coincidence that they knew the age of the universe. There's, let's accept that. It's not a coincidence. And if it's not a coincidence, then you have all this other stuff stemming from that. This this whole lost civilization world opens up, and it can't. Be, if that is not a coincidence, then, then none of this can be refuted. The door itself, to me, it looks more like Germanic mythology than than um, Indian mythology. So surprising they they found it in India. It doesn't look very Hindu to me. Uh, I guess the, the Hindu religion may have evolved in later time, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, let's uh, so periodic table. And that's what an atom really looks like. Okay, so everything's based on probability. So an electron, this electron can be here, but if it's there, it's a very low probability. It's more likely to be there. So this is a cloud of where it's likely to be. And I actually saw, I actually saw some pottery which looked exactly like this. I, I just cannot find the picture, unfortunately. I, sh I showed it to a, a, a uh, actual, an actual Indian professor, and, and he was quite impressed. He thought it, it might have re referred to the um, uh, quantum mechanical features described in the ancient texts. So here we have um, this is the um, 
the ceiling of uh, the Qutub Minaret complex. And, yeah, I, I think this is all atomic. This, this stems from atomic stuff. Sure, it's very decorative and it's perfect for a dome. Yes, you would make a dome like this, concentric circles. But somewhere in this art, there lies an origin which is atomic. Not necessarily in this, but... It, well, actually, it could be in this minaret. I'll show you another. This is another picture. Uh, I think that ceiling is in there. I'm not quite sure because I haven't been there. I'm just looking at photos online. Here we have one, two, three, four orbitals. And these, these could be the number of electrons in each orbit. So you see it all stems from a certain idea. Now, this is tantalum. Now, when I was compiling this, I, I realized that the, I counted up the electrons. I realized one of these structures I'm showing you refers to tantalum. I don't know which one, but it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but tantalum, it's got 73, so atomic number 73. That means it weighs, uh, that means that that's the number of protons. You add the number of neutrons and you get something like 180 um, and electrons and all that. That's the total atomic weight. Uh, but the number of, that's the reactive number because it's also the number of electrons. And... Where do Mandela's come from? They, to me, they, they are a microcosm of the, the whole universe, and they look like atoms to me. They don't look like solar systems, they look like atoms. Here in the center is sort of like a, a dancing genie, sort of like a, a red fire god, an elemental force of destruction or, and recreation, a, a joker god, a trickster god, a god who can give it all but then take it all away. And here we have the Suasti glyph which is rather interesting because this is all about the wind. This essentially means the winds of change. That's what it is. It's, it's sort of like a fire wind sort of spinning wheel, a sun wheel. And here we have almost like flowers. Creation is opening up. It's a very artistic way of depicting an atom. And of course, there's six, there's six points flowing in a cosmic liquid. And here we have the reactive fire around the atom. Unless it's depicting also the sun, which is also very similar. I think the sun is just a huge atom, really, just scaled up. And here we have... Or a huge electron, more precisely. It's more like a particle than a collection. Of, uh, it's more like, it acts like a single particle, I think. Now, here we have a collection of uh, interesting things. Often in these mandalas... See, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, if we count those. Right. Let me tell you now, this is exactly an atom. So many elements have eight in the outer orbital, sometimes ten. This one is really close to an atom, really close. And this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That twelve again. So twelve, eight. Yeah, look, this is following um, uh, laws of atomic uh, configuration, this one here. Not all of them do, but this one does. Okay, now... That could be just because they wanted to do this uh, because of symmetry, symmetry or whatever. But look, electrons also pair up, and they've, they've paired those twos up. They've paired their, them up. They've paired they pair them up. That's how that's how they operate. Stars operate in the same way. They're usually born in pairs. Planets are born in pairs. And here we have something else. So I don't know what's going on here. These are stairs, and there's a there's a great um, little stupor at the top, but these are all mini stupas, and they tend to put mini stupas in a circle around bigger stupas. Here it's done a bit differently, a bit rectangular. Again, uh, another mandala. We've got five, and then we've got four. Yes, it's, it's following certain laws. I mean, it, this is so interesting, and it's like, it's like they knew the power of the atom, and they were so impressed by the power of the atom that they made these mandalas. And, and atoms really are a universe unto themselves. And they knew this. They made depictions of them. They drew them to show others. And there we go, Borobudur. And if that's not an atom, uh, if that's not supposed to be an atom, I, I suppose it... I mean, what is going on? This is a mandala. It looks like a mandala from the top, which is rather interesting. So that's what they were trying to do. But of course, by the time they made these structures and drew the mandalas, they probably didn't know what an atom was anymore. They, they just drew them because their parents drew them. It was a tradition. Just like every other tradition around the world, we don't know why we're doing things. We're just doing them because our parents did. So here we have a sort of nucleus. And then we have... Now, if these are atoms, these are very heavy, uh, very heavy atoms. Very high atomic weight. Unstable, some of them. Unstable. But I believe they worshipped, they worshipped science, they worshipped uh, the power of the atom. 
by the way, you know those round towers in Ireland? The base of them looks just like the, this, except the round towers in Ireland are about this wide, about this wide, and about a hundred feet tall. So maybe about maybe about that tall, that big. That's a round tower in Ireland. Imagine how colossal this unbelievable round tower was. Uh, this is the um, uh, Alay Minaret Kutub complex again. Uh, I think it's in India. India, or, yeah, it, it's in India. Unbelievable. This is from the Mahabharata period for sure. And of course, that iron pillar uh, at the at the Kutub Minar complex as well. This is unbelievable. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think they added that writing later. They added this in the, the Middle Ages. Look, there's more scroll there, but it's, it's added differently. The cannonball hit. It's starting to rust out, it seems. Oh, well, can't hold off acid rain forever. Uh, that again. And back to the door. What was behind this door? Thank you very much.